to face, I embrace debate. I don't make mistakes, I just make my case. Drop the mic when I'm done. What more can I say? Not bite, turn my tongue. I don't like the taste. I'm on and I'm on and I own my opponent. I'm always in the zone, either zoned out or zoning. And we can get it poppin'. Pick the topic if you want to skip it, shine it, skip it, hop it. Took these sports and made a profit. All right, undisputed. Welcome to Undisputed Live from Los Angeles, everybody. Good morning, I'm Jen Hale, here with Skip Bayless, and we got Shannon Sharp. What? Moat from Atlanta, looking very uh, patriotic as red, white. Now I gotta look at your <laughs> overinflated head the whole day. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's actually Kawhi lifestyle. told me to tell you hello, Skip. Who? Kawhi told me to tell you, Kawhi Leonard told me to tell he you hello. Not, he's not there. You're in the wrong <laughs> town, you're not in Toronto. <laughs> But before we get started, I do want to congratulate my Vanderbilt Commodores for making it to the College World Series again. No more and I want to congratulate Kendrick Perkins for doing something you were never able to do. Kendrick beat me out of a what? case last Friday night. You didn't have the guts to take it, uh, but he did. Way to go, Kendrick. You know I owe what? You. I was kicked. I've been kicking myself the entire, all weekend long, like I had him. I had him across the fire and I let him go. Well, you did because you did not have the courage of your convictions as I'm about <laughs> to have once again. Thank you very much. Oh, really? Yes, oh, here we go. Okay, well, we're about to, we're about to find out how much conviction yeah. you have. Okay. You know he is never short <laughs> on predictions or scoop. All right, let's get to tonight's must win face off for the Warriors. They are one loss away from elimination. However, is help on the way? Kevin Durant practiced yesterday for the first time since straining his calf a month ago. He's now listed as questionable for Game 5 tonight in Toronto. This weekend, KD did spend some time with ice packs on his calf and Achilles area. KD's possible addition to the lineup significantly changed tonight's line. Toronto went from a three and a half point favorite to just one and a half. And let's face it, KD's finals MVP odds got a whole lot better too. So, Shannon, what do you think will happen in Game 5 tonight? Well, I think, <clears throat> Skip, I think we've all gone to church, and no matter what your faith is, if it's a, a pastor, if it's a priest, if it's a bishop, the last thing they do before they dismiss church, they give the benediction. Well, the benediction will be given tonight. It's over. The Toronto Raptors will be the 2019 NBA champs. Whether Kevin Durant comes back or not, that's unimportant at this point in time. Kawhi Leonard is playing far too well because if you, you're going to have him guard Kawhi, it doesn't seem to matter who they throw at him, be it Iggy, be it Draymond, be it Klay Thompson. He's found his rhythm. He's found a way to play around all these injuries or hurt or however you want to uh, uh, define it. He's playing extremely well. He can get to any spot on the court. And what we're starting to see, Skip, is every single game is someone else. Friday night, it was Serge Ibaka. They gave him 20 big points off the bench. The, and then it might be Mark Gasol another time. Then it might be Danny Green. They're getting the contribution. It's just not. Kawhi's being Kawhi on a nightly basis. But now he's finding other avenues to get production from. Be it Serge Ibaka with 20 or Serge Ibaka giving you six, six blocks. Be it Mark Gasol giving you 20 and 7 or Kyle Lowry chipping in with 23 points. It's over. Uh, Steph Curry is extremely tired. Skip, I watched him the other night, and I counted about 10 of his shots that hit the front of the rim. And when shots hit the front of the rim for a jump shooter, that lets you know that he's tired no. because you ask an awful lot of him in game three. He scored 47, led the team in scoring, led the team in rebounding, led the team in assists. That's not a workload that he's comfortable carrying. And all those <clears throat> Clay came back and gave you tremendous minutes. No one else was able to come along with him. It comes to a time, Skip, at some point in time, you have to realize that the better team currently are the Toronto Raptors. They're playing better on a more consistent basis. And if you exclude that 18-0 run, Skip, they've outscored them by 49 points. So I don't really know what else to tell you. They've outplayed them in three of the four games. Yeah, three of the four games. This is why they have a 3-1 lead. Going back home in Jurassic Park, is about to get crunk. Mm. First of all, I am not going to let you give Steph Curry the same sort of excuse you're giving number two, because I don't want to hear that Steph Curry is tired. He's out of gas. It's the NBA Finals. Stop it. You're at home. You can't tell me because you scored 47 the game before game three, and it was like the less 
the least impactful 47 points I have ever seen, the quietest 47, that suddenly you're out of gas for game four. He stunk. They all stunk in game four. <laughs> all of them. I go right down the line. But starting with Clay Steph. Clay didn't stink. Clay well, didn't stink. What did I tell you before the series started? I picked Clay to be the MVP of this series, and I'm holding out long, long, long shot hope <laughs> that he is still going to pull that are. off. Now, let's deal with, before I get to my prediction for tonight, the predictions of whether or whether or not Kevin Durant will play tonight because the betting public, the odds makers, they think he's going to play. I don't know. That's all I can interpret, read into the point spread. It has plummeted from three and a half to two. His MVP odds have gone up by more than a half, have Kevin Durant's. And obviously, if a miracle occurs and he shows up tonight in Toronto in the starting lineup and he is the reason they win game three and the reason then they win game four and then that they win, I mean, sorry, game five tonight five, six, and then six and seven. But if he's the reason they win three straight games, you know what's going to happen. It's, it's going to be the greatest story ever told. He's going to win his third straight MVP. <laughs> what are the odds on this? I say 0.5%. I say, <laughs> exactly. I, I say no percent. I say there's no way that that guy we saw in that video that we just saw where he was walking up the tunnel away from practice yesterday when he practiced for like five minutes, that guy's not going to play tonight. <clears throat> I'm sorry. I can't yeah. see it. And you've made this point before. Once again, yesterday as he walked away with Mike Brown, he had ice bags on his calf and all the way down on his Achilles tendon. Okay, so yeah. what does that tell you? What does that show you? Well, he heard us talking. Yeah. He heard us talking about how, how, low that ice, how low the ice bag was. That was never, Skip, look, you covered this game a long, long time. I played professional sports, played college. Skip, I've never seen an ice bag on a calf that low. That's all I'm saying. I've just never seen it that low. That that might that might not be the case. I don't want to play a doctor on television. But I'm just saying, in my experience, I've never seen someone put an ice bag on a calf that's down around their Achilles. So, is he just jacking with us? Is he messing with us? Is he trying to play into the theme that we've created here on this show? That he's got something wrong with his Achilles? Maybe. But I'm, I'm here to say we both concluded after we saw what happened that night in game five against the Rockets when he pulled up lame, mm -hmm. it just looked like an Achilles. I thought it was ruptured. You thought it was ruptured. It's highly possible mm -hmm. his Achilles was merely torn, that he has a significant right. tear in his Achilles tendon, but it didn't Correct. rupture. It didn't come apart and right. roll up like a lampshade up into the top of his, <laughs> the, you know, the back of his knee. So is it yeah, possible? Yeah, that would have rolled up into his calf. Yeah, there you go. Well, is it possible they're telling him, Kevin, it's just hanging by a thread. You just can't risk this. Yeah, it's highly possible. Is it possible that Steve Kerr just keeps trying to threaten Toronto? The boogeyman is coming. The boogeyman is coming. He's going to play tomorrow. <laughs> then the boogeyman is going to play the next night. And the boogeyman is going to... Nope. Right. He's not going to play because Steve Kerr keeps dropping these big hints and nothing happens. I don't even think he's even right. really practiced. And the, the odds no. on him just suddenly showing up in the starting lineup, again, the, the odds makers, the betting public, they're, they're jumping on this bandwagon. I don't think you and I are on that bandwagon. No, we're not. Skip, if you remember when Michael Jordan made his comeback in March of 1995, now Mike had been practicing probably two or three months before he made it official that he was coming back. His first night back, he played 43 minutes. He was 7 of 28, yep. scored 19 points. He had been practicing for over two to three months. And he was Kevin completely Durant would have healthy. Gone, yeah. Yes. Kevin Durant would have practiced, what, one day, maybe 20 minutes, and you expect him to come back and give you a Herculean effort. I don't see it. No. And a lot of this, and we're going to talk about it a little later, Skip, a lot of this is Steve Kerr's fault. Because he kept giving this team, he kept giving their fans false hope. Oh, he's close. He uh, Maybe game one, we'll see how it goes. And he kept moving up the timeline instead of just saying, Kevin Durant is out indefinitely, and when he comes back, we'll welcome him back. We'll get him back into the offense. Yep. But he kept providing that angst that everybody is feeling that Kevin Durant was coming back. Okay. So now he's actually 
given his team an excuse that the guy who saved this team after it blew the three to one lead to Kyrie and LeBron is now the reason they can't beat Toronto. And I think in the locker room, we're going to talk about this later, some of the reports from inside the locker room, but inside they're saying, is he Steve really, or is he not? And they're clinging to the possibility that he will save them when I don't think there's any chance he will save them. So it's either, it's one or two things. He's either not hurt at all and he's not rushing back the way Clay rushed back with his hamstring or he's significantly hurt and he just can't play. Skip, you remember it was about 16 months ago. There was a very, very similar situation that you're very familiar with. A guy that was hurt and the organization and some of his teammates didn't think he was hurt. <laughs> mm. And we know how that turned out. Mm. Yeah, but in now, that I'm case, saying, the whole now, medical staff cleared him to play. Has he been? Has I'm Kevin just, Durant I'm, been cleared? I, he has been listed as questionable. Is that cleared to play? Well, but, but here's the thing. And in and, and, and the article, if you read it, Skip, you know, everybody keeps saying, you know, well, when is he going to come back? Or when is he going uh, mm -hmm. to come back? Or someone says this, the players are saying that. But the athletic trainer hasn't cleared him. Well, if the athletic trainer hadn't cleared him, why is there act angst? Why are you so concerned? Because he hasn't been cleared, which leads you to believe what, Skip? If the athletic trainer does not uh, clear me to be on the field, why is there concern with the head coach? Why are there mm -hmm. concerns with my teammates? Because I haven't been cleared. Okay. Because it's telling me something that I'm not so sure that they believe that Kevin Durant is working as hard as he needs to be or he isn't as hard.